Hi everyone, Greg Rust with you for another edition of the KTM Summer Grill here at speedcafe.com. For this edition, we thought we would focus on the Bathurst wildcards because they all individually created some great stories. So for this, we are joined by a cast of thousands in the studio with Declan Fraser and Craig Lowndes. Welcome to you both. And joining us online, Greg Murphy from New Zealand and Matt Charter all the way from Albury as well. Welcome to you both. Thank you for being with us here today on uh, on this edition. Can we start with with you guys, CL, the notion of being a Bathurst wildcard after all these years. How did that sit with you or did you jump at the opportunity to be a part of it? Well, to be honest, at the start of the year, I was like the fifth wheel. So when Jamie retired, we he strung us out. Like we didn't know whether he was going to drive, not drive. So I didn't know whether I was going to be in a Red Bull car, another car. And then when he decided to drive, then of course uh, we headed it up with Declan in the super cheap auto car. So it was actually really nice. Instead of being a co-driver, almost become a lead driver again. And, and to be all part of that program was really special. The lead-up was tremendous for you both. In many ways, great launch in, in Brisbane. The net result within the realm of the whole Triple Eight family could not have been much better, could it? Yeah, no, nah, the, um, the whole experience of actually leading up to the Bathurst wildcard and the actual wildcard itself is so cool. Um, Super Cheap Auto done a fantastic launch for us and then just the whole build-up and making sure we were involved in all the store appearances and things. And for me, it was something that I'd never really done before. So to have... Craig mentoring me through the whole thing. It was, yeah, it was a really cool experience for me. What did he tell you? What sort of things? Oh, all, all the secrets. You know, <laughs> people love him. So um, to just have someone with all that knowledge and just the way to approach people and the way to handle myself in the public eye and um, even the way to go out on track and race, there's just so much stuff about Bathurst that you just need to know all the ins and outs of and had the perfect mentor right here to teach me. And how much did that help you? Congrats on the, the Super 2 Crown. Great way to wrap the year up. Yeah, thank you very much. It was um, a whirlwind year. It's been crazy from the wild card to the Super 2 Championship to just everything in between. It's been, uh, yeah, it's been pretty crazy. So um, I took a lot out of what Shane taught me, what Jamie taught me, what Craig taught me, Brock, everyone, and put it all into practice and finally came away with the championship. We'll get to Murph shortly, but I think he, need, he reckons you need to work on your burnouts. Is that true? Yeah, well, <laughs> I was just saying, I ha I'm 22 years old and never done a burnout before. So that was the first ever time. Uh, but I mean, I thought it was all right. But yeah, I got a got a couple of comments about how I need to do better next time. You were mentored and so was Merv with, with Peter Brock back in the day. Now you're on the, she was on the other foot. How did you find that? And what was this bloke like to work with? Uh, yeah, it was almost like full circle because you go back to 94 when I first drove into the um, circuit with Brock and you used to talk about the crowd and the atmosphere and the energy that was around the place. And it was sort of the sort of, for me, almost a yeah. Again, going the other end and walking into the garage and with Declan and, and try to describe. It wasn't necessarily I was worried about him being in the car with a helmet on. It was more of the the build up and the lead up. You know, the four days prior to getting to Sunday. You know, the signing sessions, corporate visits. You know, driver parade, all those sort of things that really uh, mentally just drains you because you you get sort of wound up and hyped with everything. You get to Sunday and you're like, oh Christ, now I got to drive a car. <laughs> so it was it was trying to to sort of manage those sort of expectations and everything else along the way and telling him to rest and yeah, just take time out for himself and just, you know, enjoy the, 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 the week of what it is, but to actually have time for yourself to just reflect and have some uh, moments where you just sort of go away, get away from the crowd, just separate yourself. And then once he got his helmet on, he was fine. Murph, can we weave you into the, the conversation here? The wild card with Peter Adderton, with Boost and Erebus was some two years in the making, which seems crazy to say. We know the reasons for that. What did it feel like on the Monday after the race? Because to those of us watching, it looked like it was a it was a fairy tale, mate. Yeah, Monday after was um, quite surreal. Uh, you know, just trying to actually compute what had actually happened and the fact that it was now done, you know, um, after after all that and the, the significance of, of coming back after so long out of a car and actually actually pinching myself to uh, realise that I'd actually just competed at another Bathurst 1000, which was just so far out of my thinking um, ever since I stopped racing in 2014. So... Um, you know, reflecting on it all afterwards, uh, yeah, there was just, there was Richie and I having lots of conversations post post the event just uh, about how it un unraveled and and really how incredibly um, successful the whole thing was and and just to finish, you know, we said right from the beginning if we finished it would be success, but you know to finish on the lead lap and just outside the top ten and uh, and have all the things that happened during during the week, 
um, I think uh, I think I'm actually still coming to terms with it now, a couple of months after. Did it validate for you? I mean, you said it a couple of times in the the lead up to the race, just how good Richie Stanaway is, and and um, how he should be a part of the the Supercars Championship uh, from the get go, from testing at Winton, he was on it, wasn't he? Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, there was a gap there from when he walked away in 19 um, to getting back in the car again, you know, which was, what, June this year. Um, so, you know, we're, we're talking a, a pretty sizable gap there. Um, was that two, oh, two point something years? I don't know, whatever it is. It was it was a long time, you know, 2021 and then and then into, into this year. Um, you would have thought it had been a, a week since he'd jumped, you know, been last in a supercar. So... You know, and straight away, you know, tick that box and, and really, you know, with a guy of his talent, his calibre, um, we've we've talked about it a lot over the last um, year or so. Um, you know, someone who's done what he's, what he's done and achieved overseas in such a different array of cars, um, it, it, it was really no surprise that he jumped back in and did what he did. But, you know, he, he had to do and prove it to himself again. You know, and you have those question marks after you... You struggle like he did for a couple of seasons in supercars, um, walks away from the game, you know, really with his head down and, and uh, not in a great place. You know, you still have those questions and, and you know, he, he wanted to prove to himself more than anything. It wasn't about proving to anyone else. I think it was more about proving to himself that that he still had everything he needed to be competitive, but also the want and the desire to actually still want to drive a race car. And um, he came away from Bathurst, I think, pretty clear in his head that he would like to, to have another crack in. You're on record as saying that's your your final Bathurst 1000 uh, appearance. Have you a... done that twice now? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll do a Nelly Melbourne again. Uh, where I'm going with this, you you did say to me in a in another chat very recently, you, you took a moment to realise this was like a bookend for you in the in that final stint to, to soak it all in, Greg, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, when I finished full time in the game uh, in 2012, as a as I suppose a lead driver, it was a it was a pretty rubbish end to um, to it all. Uh, rubbish end to my career in, in 2012, and and certainly not a not a, a memorable end as as far as uh, my last Bathurst as a main game driver. Um, and then the la- the two years after that were weren't weren't much chop either as a co driver uh, with James Courtney. Um, we didn't get much much from the events. You don't get much of it when you stick thing in the fence either. So I did that in thirteen and and uh, not not memorable. Um, this this year doing the wild card um, it feels like more of a, a proper end to my my stay as a as a driver and, and as a professional driver. And and I did get the chance to to reflect that um, knowing. You know, the last couple of laps of my my third stint at Bathurst, that it was it was soon going to be over, and and you know, I got the chance just to take and take in what it actually means to to actually have the chance to to drive at that place, and I uh, I was very thankful for that, and um, it definitely did feel like a a proper ending um, to my time as a as a supercar driver, and and also uh, you know, suitable sign off to to competing at Bathurst. Murph, I just want to tell a little story about, um, this is the first time that you and I have shared a garage since 96, 97, so it was actually really special for me. But I remember sitting in the car for qualifying, I'm strapped in, and you wandered over from the other side of the garage and basically said, good luck, because people don't realise it was probably one of the worst conditions we'd encountered with rain. And I was, I've got to say, I was nervous. So I didn't want to bin the car, but I wanted to put it in a good position. But then Richie Stanaway did an unbelievable job in qualifying, put it well within the 10, Officially, unfortunately, missed the top 10 shootout because it got cancelled for the first time. But then the pressure was on you to start the race on Sunday morning. And I went, I actually had a bit of a giggle to myself because all the, the banter you'd given me, I, I could see the reflection in your face. Yeah, thanks, Lousy. Um, yeah, uh, I was I was more than happy to sit in the garage and qualifying, and I, I made you very aware of that. Um, and um, yeah, how many spots did we have qualify you, Bon? Oh, about probably 10. <laughs> How many? No, no. It's, it's valid. I think it's around 10. Yeah. Anyway, yes, a uh, little story for that one, though. I, I, you know, it's my my good uh, countryman, mate of mine, Fabian Coulthard, was starting right alongside. And I uh, quickly went over, because we, 
you know, you we'd seen the track, the condition of the track at the exit of turn one um, was obviously just awful. So I went over to Fabian and I said, hey, uh, hey, mate, just, you know, if we happen to get into turn one side by side, you know, um, you know, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but if we do, just, you know, let's just be kind to each other and just don't run me wide into all that, into the rubbish and the shit on and the mud and the water. And he's like, mate, Kiwi bros, I would never do that to you. We go into turn one side by side. We come out, feeds me straight into the crap. <laughs> <laughs> and I lose, and I lose a spot to him and to the other well control and ready car in the making. So I haven't actually seen him since, but, uh, Anyway, not so much uh, Kiwi Kiwi love after all. Oh, uh, gold. We'll come back to you very shortly. Can we weave Matt Charter into the conversation here now? Um, Matt, awesome opportunity um, for you and capped off with great backers like like Caltex. When you look back on it now, a, a couple of months later, to to be a part of the wildcard program, and at one point it looked like a top 10 result too. You must have been pretty pretty pleased. Yeah, yeah, proud, proud of the team. You know what they managed to put together. It's something I've always wanted to do. Obviously, I always wanted to race badass myself, but to go there as a team because we've always run our own team. You know, and that's that's just the 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 pinnacle of what we ever thought we'd be able to do. And to turn up with a company like Caltex involved, that 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 didn't only blow everyone else away, that blew me away a bit. What's the learnings that's that's come out of that for you, and and has it? invigorated you matt to do it all again in 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 23 yeah yeah definitely want to do it again um but no plans at the moment whether you know i try to get a co-drive with someone or do it ourselves um there's a few co-drives there where i almost feel like we would be better off running a wild card again um because we we've proven that we can run a good outfit it was all well put together well presented went yeah pretty smoothly throughout the weekend I wouldn't mind having a bathurst where I can um, just drive in dry conditions and actually try to get some pace out. I think. Had the the issue, I think it was a it was a rotor or a disc, wasn't it? That you where you, you lost some time there. As I said, had that not happened, should have, would have, could have. But it but it may have been a a potential um, top ten scenario. When you look back on it, is that the kind of only thing that frustrated you? Yeah, yeah, that was the only thing that went wrong all weekend. It's not only. In the race all weekend, you know, we managed to make it through all practice, all qualifying, everything without putting a single mark on the car. Um, ran super clean the race, even you know, we were making some passes and that in the race, so we're running, doing, um, and it's not an issue they've had before with that caliper jamming. So, uh, I caught out the Walkinshaw guys a bit too, you know, they hadn't seen it, and I think we lost a bit over a minute because of it, which obviously is a massive, and it's a lot, it takes a while to catch up from that. Um, but yeah, overall, it was a whole experience. I'm so with it. Just before we wrap up this chat with you, um, you're well advanced, are you, on on plans for next year to put that that in place, another wild card? Not yet, no. We haven't really planned too far ahead, but we um, <laughs> <laughs> can't get too excited. I'm going to talk about in a couple of months, I guess. Okay. Murph, let's switch back to you. Could you be crossing the ditch at all for maybe some media commitments, maybe some stuff to sample uh, Gen 3. We know there's no, sadly, no Kiwi round of the Supercars Championship next year, but will you make an appearance at the at the odd round? You know, I, there's a possibility of that. Um, you know, there's, uh, I, I mean, I love, I still love supercars. Uh, love most of the people that are involved in it, I think. <laughs> there's some that I don't. But, uh, you know, and, you know, definitely with it not being, uh, and coming to New Zealand in 2023, um, I'd find it difficult to probably to, to get get through the whole season by watching it on television. Um, you know, so yeah, we'll we'll see how that plays out. Um, I'd love to come back and make the old cameo potentially and give these boys a hand. I mean, if Lowndes, Lowndes bloody goes and plays race car driver and Garth Tanner goes plays race car driver again, well then probably need um, need some support at Bathurst to, just to keep the you know TV. Uh, running smoothly, I suppose. So maybe that'll happen. To you, Craig, will you do the wildcard program again? And is it perhaps with AAA, it's super cheap? I, must, I talked to Jess Dane recently, and it does sound like that is absolutely the plan, isn't it? Uh, there, there is talks about it at the moment. Like my current uh, position is I'm contracted to Triple Eight regardless. So, you know, if it's him with the Red Bull cars or a, a wildcard car, um, but the talks are definitely there. And, uh, and if, if it does eventuate to be another wildcard car with this, Junior, I'll, I'll be really happy. He can do with the qualifying now. And I'll be like Murph, I'm like good luck, <laughs> good luck. 
And from your standpoint, your name was linked with uh, with some teams for a potential, you know, frontline appearance in the, the Supercar Series next year. That hasn't eventuated, very sadly. What are what are your plans for next year? Ah, uh, yeah, like you said, we were we had a few chats going with uh, multiple teams, but um, I think for me now. All I wanted to do was to win the Super 2 Championship for this year. And I worked so hard mentally preparing myself for Bathurst um, and also for Adelaide as well. And um, to go out in Adelaide and really put on a show and pole both races and then win both races as well. It was, um, yeah, it was, it, it was a cool experience. But now I've got to think about what I do next. So um, whatever that looks like, I'm not exactly sure yet. And we're just trying to figure it out. I've got a lot of time now that there's no main game opportunities. I can sort of think about it. And um, yeah, wherever I end up, I'm excited for the future good stuff matt murph thank you for talking to us today to you and your families uh enjoy the the festive season we look forward to seeing murph with a microphone and matt you uh back with another wildcard appearance at the mountain next year you know thanks guys see you when you get back rusty look forward to it murph and uh to you two both merry christmas and uh, and, and all the best for um for the new year Thank you. Me too. There they are. Craig Lowndes, Declan Fraser, Greg Murphy and Matt Charter on the line as well. And that is another edition of the KTM Summer Grill Run and Done. Make sure you tune in tomorrow to see who our next guests are. As a part of this year's Summer Grill, our great partner in KTM each week has a special prize pack to give away, which includes a stool, a stubby holder and a KTM hat. Very cool additions for your man cave, your garage, or just for around the barbecue. To enter, all you've got to do is head to speedcafe.com or click on the link description below and you could be in the running. And check out, of course, tomorrow's next edition of the KTM Summer Grill right here at speedcafe.com.